Hey guys and gals, Homestead Prepper, and uh, I got my uh, well pump removed, and uh, I'll just show you a little, it was uh, down about 65 feet or so, and uh, that's part of the pipe right there at Schedule 80 PVC, and uh, this is the uh, old well pump, and uh, yeah, I guess it looks like we got some iron in our water, huh? And this is the uh, that's the motor, and these are the leads. You got the wire. And what I'm going to do is unscrew this and get the uh, new pump ready. And just unscrew this. It would be out by now. There we go. And that's what you're looking at right there. And you can see the old one and you can see the new one. And uh, this might be of interest to somebody. But um, what I'm doing is I'm making the uh, underwater wire connections. And I finished that one. And that one. And this is, I uh, already got that one crimped. I just put some crimpers in there. And this is heat shrink tubing, and we'll see if I can do it. I don't know if I can. That was probably one of the most boring minutes of your life right there. But uh, if you look, you can see on the ends how the the glue comes out of it. And it makes a really good seal. I don't know if that shows up in the camera or not. But that's what you're looking for. And then, of course, uh, these are the old ones. And you notice this is what we call a two-wire pump. Even though there's three wires there, I guess the ground doesn't count. This is a three-wire pump, which there's four wires, including the ground. And with uh, a four-wire pump, you've got to have one of these, a control box. And uh, I was advised to get a control box because uh, if the capacitor ever goes out, like in this two-wire pump right here, then you have to disassemble it to get to it. If it goes out in this one, then it's up on top where the rest of the controls are. So, anyway, I just thought I'd run that by y'all. Okay, this is the uh, well seal. And... Um, what I've done is I've taken the old crappy bolts out. You can see how corroded they are. And I've replaced them with uh, brand new galvanized ones. And um, I figured that the next time I go to replace this pump, these things are not going to come out and they're just going to break off. And uh, the, I didn't go with stainless because uh, I've had stainless uh, corrode inside steel and the bolt breaks off and it's a son of a gun to try and drill out stainless. So uh, there again, that's why I went with this galvanized. And uh, I put some of that um, Teflon sealer around the bolts and they should come off no problem in the future and that's going to be my attachment point for the uh, aircraft cable and uh, let me show you all this over here okay this is the drop pipe and uh, it was quite a job for the tractor to try and pull it 20 feet up in the air and I was worried about it snapping off because uh, the white pipe is very brittle or it can be very brittle 
Uh, so what we did is we cut it off at about 10 foot sections and uh, what I did here is I just threaded the pipe here with an inch and a quarter thread uh, pipe threader. And uh, if you're going to use uh, Schedule 40 or Schedule 20 PVC and use that as your drop pipe on your submersible pump, uh, I think you're going to have problems and your pump is probably not going to be retrievable when it breaks off. So always use uh, Schedule 80 or use galvanized. Um, I know some people are saying they would replace this. I mean if you want to use you know, stainless steel pipe that's probably even better yet. Uh, another thing you want to do when you uh, pull out your submersible pump is you want to put some uh, bleach or some chlorine down there. And uh, you also want to cover this, because if you were to leave this open, and then uh, you come back, you do something, you come back later, and you put that pump in there, and then you notice your water start tasting funny, well, uh, you know, a, a possum or a bird or something or a rat could go in that pipe and die, and uh, it, would, it, would, it would be really unpleasant. So anyway, just something I thought I'd share with you all.